Oh man, I can't wait for the next season of Survivor to start. I sure hope they put in something crazy this time, like an idle nullifier nullifier. My, 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 Yep, this is my, what it'd be like. My, Oh, that's right. Well, if I can't watch Survivor, then I guess I'll play Survivor. Survivor is the only TV show I go out of my way to watch these days. It's been around since 2000, but I didn't start watching until its 30th season in 2015. The show's concept is that 16 to 20 people are marooned on islands for 39 days and are split into teams that must survive the elements and compete against each other in challenges. Some are for rewards to improve life on the island, but most are for immunity from getting voted off, which is the main part of the game. I was initially drawn into the show because of the challenges, since I grew up watching a lot of Nick Guts and Legends of the Hidden Temple, but after a few seasons, the social politics became my favorite part. The goal is to be the last person remaining, and because the only way to advance is by voting, that means it's typically beneficial to align with other players, but even if six people group up, someone will always be the first to go from their group. Which makes for a lot of thrilling television, watching people decide to flip on their alliance, or seeing a dominant player trick their alliance into thinking they can't win. But in the early seasons, there wasn't a lot of strategic thinking about the boot order. People were usually voted off because they're old, they're annoying, they're weak, they're lazy, they put their foot with the planters wore in the drinking water, they were chewing on a blade of grass, they're fucking insane, it really does not matter. But if you were strong and fun to be around, you could usually make it to the end very easily. This has led to a ton of counterplay over the years, where these players are voted out sooner because they usually win, so now it's common to see people downplay their strengths as much as possible so they don't become targets. Another common strategy and reliable way to win is to stick with your tribe, because halfway through the game the tribes merge into one, so it's really easy for a larger tribe to pick off the other if they merge with a one player difference. This became so dominant that now we see tribe swaps once or twice before the merge, which gives players more opportunities to flip if they think they're on the bottom of their original tribe. Also at the merge is when the jury starts. When players are voted off, they join the jury, and once the game only has two or three players left, the jury will vote for who they think the winner should be. Again, this adds a layer of strategy because you don't want to vote someone out who probably won't vote for you in the end, but sometimes you have to vote them out because they won't bring you to the end. So those are the basics to Survivor. If it all sounds too complicated, the best strategy right now is to be a white man because there's no counterplay. And if you couldn't tell, I and many other Survivor fans like to imagine how we would play and what past players' games we would emulate. Now, based on my personality and epic gamer physique, I'd say I'm a mix of Tyson and Liquid, Ken. But you don't really know how you'll play until you step on the island. Now, I can't exactly call Jeff up on the Jeff phone and tell him to let me play Survivor, but the next best thing I've got is Survivor for the Nintendo DS. I haven't actually played this before, so I have no idea what to expect, but let's maroon and chill. So right away I can choose what tribe I get to start on. The choices are Red Silhouette of the Willard Idol and Yellow Silhouette of the Willard Idol. You don't find out until the game starts, but this choice determines what beach you get to play on and what tribe mates you get. I'm picking yellow because I think I look real good in a yellow buff, and now we can finally make our character. There's surprisingly a lot of options to customize your character. I thought there might have been template characters to choose from, but they went all in with editing facial features. Except you can only choose where they are and not what they look like. I want people to think I'm the real deal, so I had to make my character bald. There isn't actually a bald hairstyle, so I'll go with a receding hairline. Now, what should we name this little man of ours? Uh, how about War Dog? I mean, who in the world would ever name their kid War Dog? And everything's good to go, let's get this adventure started. Hello and welcome to Survivor, I'm Jeff Probes. Oh god. Jeff. Daddy. What have they done to you? They forgot his iconic Survivor hat. Adventure of a lifetime, battle of the elements, yada yada yada. 40 days?! Any Survivor fan can tell you the game goes on for 39 days. I mean, it's the thing Jeff always says at the beginning. 39 days, 16 people, one Survivor. Whatever, maybe it's like Australia when they did 42 days that one time. Besides, that's one more day I get to play. So right away we get a little character reel of who we're playing with. They all use names of pre-existing Survivor players, which I can forgive, but you can't tell me it isn't weird playing with the Dreams, and he looks like this. There's Gary, a personal trainer. Amanda, the authoritarian. Becky, the... Bimbo. Jeff, really? 
We got Robert, a drive instructor, Cassandra, the housewife, Dre, the farmer, Poverty, the midwife, Todd, the estate agent, Courtney, the saleswoman, Ozzy, an insurance broker, Jessica, a blunt gas station manager, JT, a special needs teacher, Danny, another woman with a strong personality, Ethan, a physiotherapist, and Susie, the token student. And we're in. Jeff says we should build a shelter right away, so let's go and look for the bamboo production hid for us. Hold on, Amanda's got something to say. We need one group to look for wood and one group to look for water. Amanda's right, so I guess I'll just explore for a bit until I find either. I found a clam on the beach, and the game lets me play a mini game. All I really do is use the touch screen to reveal three of them, but it's a fun little mini game for what it's worth. Oh, and now Todd's agreeing with Amanda. They seem to know what's up. I think I want to align with them. And now I found a crab. In this mini game, you just tell the crabs to eat their snack before clobbering them in the back of the fucking head with a tree branch. Someone just found a water well, and it's now been marked on this handy dandy map I've got. It also marks the resources I found, so I'm guessing they'll respawn later. Jeff, get off the island! The game's afoot! Jeez! He says something important has happened, and that my response will affect my relationship with the tribe. Robert says Amanda's being kinda bossy. Robert, it's day one. We need a shelter. Quit trying to pull some Massachusetts Robert type of manipulation so soon. And besides, I don't need him knowing I want to work with Amanda, so let's tell him he's wrong. They always say to agree with people on Survivor, but I have a really bad feeling about Robert. Okay, let's try not to fight and get the shelter put together. I prefer something a little elevated and further from the shore, but this will have to do. And since we have a shelter, let's make a fire. This one requires striking the stylus back and forth as if I'm rubbing sticks together, and needing to blow in the microphone is a nice touch. I've had a pretty busy first day, so I think it'll be nice to rest around camp and get to know my tribe a little better. It would be easier here without you. Yo, what the fuck? If you make no effort, you'll soon be off the island. Dude, I've been busting my ass making this fire and catching food, and you don't fucking want me here? Robert, are you seriously blowing up my game on day one? Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. You know what? If you don't want me here, you have to suffer. No sleep for anyone. Ah! Hey, uh, no hard feelings, right? Uh, we can fix things. Uh, let's start by cooking up some breakfast. Uh, if I'm the sole provider, they'll have to keep me around. My reputation is still pretty low, but I just gotta work my way back up until I can overthrow Robert. So let's catch some fish, because I mean, that's got a pretty high track record of saving people who are on life support. Survivor spoiler, it doesn't. I don't like this one too much, you just have to stab the fish, but the small one in particular is too fast to predict. If you have four fish, you can cook them, but I don't think it's worth it because it takes too long to do. My reputation is dirt, but even I have to draw the line somewhere. And now we've been summoned for our first reward challenge. This can be my time to really prove myself to the tribe. It's the fire race they did at the beginning of Borneo. It's cool how they put this challenge on the game, but this adaptation sucks. I'm swiping the stylus as fast as I can to move, but I'm just slower than the other tribe, and it lasts so long that my wrists are starting to get fatigued, so I never even had a chance. And then these torches require me to be right next to them, and if I'm off by just a little, I lose so much time while the other tribe gets it right every time. I just hope my tribe doesn't blame me for that loss, otherwise I'm really screwed. Let's just talk to the rest of my tribe. Maybe I am overreacted about my position, but man am I looking like a journey at it if I go far. Amanda and Todd are still with me, Parvati's making me worried, and I have no idea where Jessica is, but if she's good, I might have a block of five I can use to take out Robert. A new conversation showed up. I didn't realize this circle meant I had to scroll up, but it looks like Amanda is stepping on more toes, and Parvati is one of them. And fucking Robert's involved too, of course. I don't think I'll be able to take a shot at him right away. He is always making his voice heard, and everyone's listening too. I just gotta keep providing. Just keep providing. So, suddenly Robert likes me now. JT does too. I don't want to get too confident, but I think I have some footing finally. Susie, on the other hand, still hates me. I don't think I can get Robert and JT to vote her out, but my reputation has gone up, so I might be able to flip everyone else against her. JT and Amanda clashed about the immunity trial. Amanda really talked down to him. Amanda, what are you doing? I can't get us both to the top when nobody wants to work with you! Maybe, just maybe. I can save us some time to patch out relationships by winning immunity. In this challenge, I have to draw circles while blowing to simulate holding my breath. I don't like how these games are physically tolling on me, but it adds a layer of immersion most games lack. 
It was a close match, but I lost by a point, so that means we have to go to Tribal Council. Amanda is set to vote off JT, which makes sense because of their feud, but I need her to vote for Susie instead. Too bad trying to talk with other players is pointless. I mean, really. We have to vote somebody off, and all Poverty can think of is the big crap she saw. Now, I don't know how this game works, so maybe the people who respect me will just know to vote the way I am. Otherwise, I'm in serious trouble. Remember in Survivor when they just didn't show Tribal Council and went straight to the vote? I feel like this would be a good opportunity to force the player to pick sides by asking a few questions about tribe dynamics. I'd make a joke about Jeff being all boopity boppity, Jessica, go vote, but I gotta show you exactly how it is. They pretty much gutted the most important part of the show, but like I said, hopefully my tribe likes me enough to vote with me. Come and meet me. It's like Jeff's inviting Amanda to a nice brunch. And what's with the baby torches they have to hold together? And why should go in that way? Don't they know the way out is always behind Jeff? <sighs> Whatever. There were five votes against Amanda, so I don't know if Parvati and Jessica want to get rid of Amanda, or if they're working with Robert, so I need to check in with them. Fuck! Todd really doesn't like that he got blindsided. You guys can't see it, but he is going OTTNN5 right now. It is toxic. He just dumped our rice in the fire and then poured water over the fire. And we can't do anything about it because we already have our next reward challenge. This is just like the last water challenge, except I totally choked it at the end because I stopped blowing halfway through. Please don't take that out of context. So like Todd is fuming now and everyone started ignoring him. So he hits me up with that question mark, question mark, question mark text. So I come to check up on him and he's telling me he's afraid of the jungle. Nice. I really have no allies right now, but you know what? I want to win an immunity challenge just once. And I don't know what plane of existence Todd lives on, but he knows I chose to save him. Gary is voted off the Atanas tribe and like God, I too rested on the seventh day. Todd has started to target me. This fool says I eat more than everyone, and well, he's not wrong, but my reputation never drops when I'm hand-fisting whole plantains and coconuts down my mouth, so I'ma keep doing that. So Todd, you are wrong, and I will always wave my finger in your face if you want to keep accusing me of being selfish. Alright, next reward challenge. They didn't even give me a chance to fail. I don't even know how to play this one. I lost that fast. You know what? It was just for a harpoon gun. A harpoon gun? You know, that's a bit more tactical than a Hawaiian swing, don't you think? My hygiene's not great? It's day nine, Jeff. I'm a gamer. Everyone already knows I haven't showered in eight months. I don't need you to come to our camp just to roast me like that. But fine. I'll wash up if you're gonna get on my ass about it. JT, I'm busy right now. Maybe if you didn't treat me and Todd like shit, he wouldn't have to think about flipping. Yeah, sure, just get out of my hair. Immunity challenge time. Should I throw it to get rid of Todd? Well, I'm probably next to go after him, so I need to win this one, even though I'm pretty sure Todd's gonna start pooping in the shelter if he's here any longer. Well, I lost because I didn't know how fast I should move the stylus, so it looks like Todd's going. I get you. Go home. Goodbye. I find this rain quite symbolic as my path to the end is unclear. There's six of us left, but Robert controls half the numbers, so my options are to buddy-buddy with him hard and flip at the merge, or I can try to force a tie if we get a tribal council again. 
The next reward challenge is that one where the players have to carry something heavy underwater. It's nothing too different compared to the other challenges I've played, so this time I knew what was going on, so I won it quite easily. We won some soap and shampoo, and right away Jessica and Poverty start using our drinking water to clean themselves, so it looks like they're Robert's next target. The rain also stopped, so I decided to upgrade the shelter. It's still not elevated, but hopefully it raises my reputation some more. Jeff, come on. I don't need you to come here and tell me, War Dog, you are going to die. Maybe if you gave out pastries for the reward instead of shampoo, we wouldn't be having this conversation, okay? In the next immunity challenge, I have to run through an obstacle course while trying not to spill water, but it's also a race. I wouldn't mind playing this in real life, but these obstacles have such a small time frame to react. It's like the very first challenge all over again, where the other tribe is too perfect. And I ran out of water before I even got to the end, so we just lost on the spot. If this were normal Survivor, I'd have to assume I'm going home tonight, but this isn't normal Survivor, so anything is possible. In fact, Poverty thinks it'll be her just as much as I think it's gonna be me. Hey, don't feed that Snatch Poverty. Man, I told you we should be calling him Massachusetts Robert. This guy's only in this game for himself, and now I really see it. We can't be doing that, Robert, and I know you probably have JT on board since he's so focused on food rations, but it's just such an unethical move. It looks like Jessica is already accepting that she's going to be next. I haven't spoken to her at all, so I guess I have to bite my tongue and align with Robert if we lose immunity again. Fortunately, we get to skip a reward challenge and compete for immunity, and at this point I'm feeling like most of these challenges are rigged because I keep losing balance even though I'm doing everything right. Also check out the audio on this one. I haven't talked about the game's music at all, but this is what you get to listen to the entire time. Unsurprisingly, Jessica is voted off next, which means I have nowhere to hide. It's just me against Robert's alliance. So of course, Robert being the strategist he is, he tells me JT is his next target. I'd rather target Susie if it's between these two, but I don't have any agency to push that agenda. During the reward challenge, we once again lose. The other tribe is just faster at all these challenges, but Robert is publicly blaming JT for that loss. I don't know what he's thinking or what he's planning, but I need the numbers if we go to Tribal Council, and I need to stick with him. Well, we lose yet another immunity challenge, so I have to pray that Robert's got my back. I don't know if Susie's gonna vote with us, so it looks like it'll be a tie, and it's up in the air after that. I'm gonna kill him, that fucking backstabby, lying ass, cheating ass Robert, voting himself out of the game. I need my revenge on you, Robert. Hey, bring him in. She. You're about to get pogonged. Y'all are going to that shitty ass Oreo camp. I hear they got a cute little fish. Make big moves and dig deep. I have made it to the merge and I have no idea how. I'm a free agent so I can either get picked off or picked up by the other tribe. Let's see what everyone's thinking about. Dre is pretty neutral. 
Cassandra is friendly. Becky wants to align. I gotta work with her so she can prove to herself she isn't a bimbo. Courtney already sees me as a threat. Ozzy wants my address. Ah, what the heck. Danny seems pretty friendly, and so does Ethan. Oh, and now Danny is feeling sick, so she's resting in the shelter. I don't know if Danny was next to go for these guys, but they think she's bluffing to store energy for the challenge. And I gotta say, this is some degenerate logic for the merge. If she's sick, that's easy competition, and if she's lying, you can easily hold that against her. Especially in a 7-3 lead, so sure, I'll vote for Danny, but only because I've got nothing to lose. But nothing will make me feel safer than having that immunity necklace on. And now Susie and JT are fighting. Susie really wants to win the next challenge. This challenge sucks, and uh, JT wins it, of course he does. Then JT starts accusing Susie of eating more food because that's just what he does, and Susie gets so frustrated that she wants to vote her off, and one immunity challenge later, she gets her wish. And now Cassandra has hurt her arm, and Courtney's response is something else. It's a pity, Cassandra, but now it's each to their own. Bruh, Courtney is a bitch! And now Cassandra's like, I'm gonna rest because my arm hurts, but I'm also resting for the challenge. Quit worrying about resting for the challenges, I swear this game takes place in some alternate universe where all the conventions of Survivor are completely ripped away because nothing has been making sense here! And Cassandra's boned anyways because the challenge requires your arm function in 100% to row a boat, and despite us being in lanes, Cassandra is mad that Courtney somehow sabotaged her. Frankly, I hate both of you, but Cassandra's weaker right now, so I want to go further with her. <laughs> Now Ethan is drinking whatever Kool-Aid Courtney had. JT says he promised his family he'd make it to the finals, and Ethan... Oh my god. A noble promise, but you'll struggle considering your physical condition. So the next reward challenge is a balance game like the candle when I instantly failed on. And after failing this one too, I just hope that the final immunity challenge isn't something like this if I make it that far. After the challenge, JT gets sick, which seems to be a recurring scapegoat to advance the story, so I'm guessing he's magically the target after the immunity challenge, which happens to be the same minigame for the first individual immunity challenge, which I won, so of course I win it again. And it looks like I'm gonna be right about JT since he keeps telling me how drained he is and finally begs us to vote him off or else he'll quit. And since this game doesn't let me have an opinion, we're voting him off. This now makes me the last original Oreos member left. I've already felt alone from the beginning, so I don't feel much different now that it's just me. My respect is still through the roof. If you win individual immunities, you're supposed to lose respect, but everyone likes me so much from providing food that nobody cares if I win a challenge. Ethan's approaching me this morning, telling me that Courtney and Becky are being lazy, but that contradicts the ideology that Becky is not a bimbo, so I have to think that Ethan is full of shit. We play a little archery challenge for reward, then Ethan comes to me again saying Courtney and Becky are hiding food. This guy is crying wolf too many times, and he's starting to look untrustworthy. There's yet another balancing challenge. I promise in real life I'm a hell of a lot more coordinated than little war dog is here, but the good news is that Ethan didn't win immunity, so I'm hoping Becky and Courtney are voting for him since he's slandering their names, and we'll have half the votes right there. F you. Before anybody else starts throwing each other under the bus, there's a reward challenge, and this is one I want to see on the actual show. It's a simple race from one post to another, but everybody is carrying a heavy bag. After the race, the loser gives their weights to another player, putting them in a disadvantage. It's like the Q&A challenges, where players have to publicly cut a rope representing another player, basically telling them where they stand in the tribe. But even with three of the five weights on me, I pull out a W on this one. And after the challenge, Ozzy pulls me aside asking for my social security number and asking me to work with him, because Becky and Courtney will certainly take each other to the final two. It's not a bad idea, but we'll have to see how things play out after the immunity challenge. This is another rehash of an old challenge, but because it's shorter and more linear, I was able to blaze across it real easily. And then right before Tribal Council, Dre pulls me aside and says Ozzy promised him a spot in the final two too. Now I don't take much issue with that since Ozzy's trying to secure himself in the finals, and I expect gameplay like that this deep into the game. But what makes this conversation important is that I assume us guys are all going to vote the same, which means we're guaranteed in the final three. Damn. Am I cursed? Do people like me but just don't want to work with me? I don't get it. And now I don't even know if I can rely on Dre to vote with me next time to split up Becky and Courtney. I just gotta wait and find out.
So if you're familiar with Survivor, you probably know about the Final Four fire making twist and how it evades the necessity for players to earn their spot in the finals with their social, strategic, or physical games. Most people in the fanbase hate it. Sure, it can provide tons of drama on TV, but as a game mechanic, it sucks because it can save somebody who would have been voted off normally without the fire making challenge existing. Survivor DS says, how can we make the Final Four even worse? And well, I don't think the producers could top this one. How about we just play challenges and whoever places last is instantly eliminated? It's like I'm playing a different game because the sudden shift and rules spit in what I've been doing the first 38 days. In the first challenge you have to collect shells on this secluded map, then once again on the island you've been playing on. This won't last like 4 minutes, but what makes it stand out to me is that this first island you play on is the smoothest this game has ever run. I might be crazy, but I feel like the animations are less choppy here. So Becky ends up losing this one, and we go right into the final immunity challenge. It's a balance challenge, guess how this goes? Fortunately, I have infinite attempts, and it took me 14 tries to figure this out, and what made this more frustrating is that I had to wait about 2 minutes before the game can let me try again. And the solution? Kinda irritating. But that doesn't matter anymore because I made it to the final 2. I never would have imagined I'd make it this far after my closest allies shafted me so hard in the first week, but I think I have a great case against Dre. He won a lot of challenges after the merge, but I've won just as many, and he spent too much time hiding under the radar that I don't think anyone will respect his journey as much as mine. I don't expect the final tribal council to have some challenge for me since every other tribal council has been lacking, so let's see if my suffering was all worth it. So there you have it, that's Survivor for the Nintendo DS. It's one of the worst games I've ever played, but I was emotionally invested in it a few times. I didn't mention this before, but this game does support multiplayer. I could easily open up the sealed copy of the game I have to see what it's like, but I'm really confident it's just to play the challenges with someone, and uh, I really don't want to play those again. There is one thing I'm sure everybody's been wondering about this game. Can you die? There's health meters, and as you saw before, Jeff will come to remind us to eat, but what happens if you don't eat, drink, or sleep? Well, now that I've killed my avatar, I guess that's the end of Survivor. There won't be another season for a while, so I guess I'll go and watch some older seasons. I've got nothing else for you. head back to camp, but before you do, feel free to leave a like as well if the channel grow, and subscribe to get updates on my uploads as soon as they happen, but until then, I will see you all next time.